You guys are probably losing sleep over this one. How does mold get in my attic? And there's a couple reasons why you can find mold in the attic. And when I'm talking about mold, it's when you go into your attic and you see this black covering on the mostly uh, the underside of the roof deck. You're going to see black. Sometimes you'll see it on your rafters. Not too often, but mostly mold that we find during home inspections is going to be isolated to the underside of the roof deck. And of course, mold needs a couple things to grow. It needs something organic, which is our wood, and it needs the right conditions. It needs oxygen, which we have an ample supply in the attic, and it also needs moisture. And that's, that's what we want to correct. And that's what we want to really focus on and talk about today is how do you correct this moisture that's going up to the attic space? Primarily the cause of mold in an attic space, and we won't get into the weeds too much, but you really want to make sure that your attic ventilation is sufficient. And so when I'm talking about attic ventilation, I'm talking about soffit venting, which are the vents under the eave areas of the house that allow air in. And we're also talking about ridge ventilation, which is the area that's high up in the roof. So the, the ridge of the roof should have its, its ventilation as well. So air comes in from the lower portion and it exits the top, okay? All along the way, it's gonna be de delivering moisture, right? So this hot, moist air should be following the path of ventilation and air currents from the lower to the upper and then exiting. There's also something called gable ventilation, which are, usually you'll find these vents on the sides of homes. So these allow for cross ventilation, you know, kind of similar to an open window. And we'll have, you know, cur air currents coming in and, and cross ventilation. And that also helps keep, you know, moisture out of our attic space. So make sure your ventilation is adequate. So if moisture is, is our culprit, where does this moisture come from, right? So moisture comes from a couple things and we have to make sure, and this is something that we see a lot of times as home inspectors that's not really done correctly. And we find that the bathrooms and the kitchen are not properly vented, right? So either they're not vented at all or they're venting into the attic space. So the problem here is that if they're not vented at all, all our moisture, which is this hot, moist air, is traveling upward, right? We're going upward into the house. And where does it moisture settle? Moisture settles on the underside of the attic roof deck. And that helps create these mold uh, conducive conditions. So we want our bathrooms and kitchens to be properly vented to the exterior of the home so the moisture goes outside and not inside. Now you would think this is a simple thing, right? It's, this is not too much to ask for, but sometimes it's like moving mountains. And most of the time, these vents are inadequately done or missing altogether. Now, sometimes you know, you'll say, oh, well, I don't have a, a fan in my bathroom. I'll just open the window. I don't know anybody who opens their window in January and February um, you know, during a shower and after the shower. I mean, that's just silly. So why not have a properly configured uh, bathroom ventilation fan? Nobody, nobody's going to open this window, right? Another thing that causes mold is wet basements or crawl spaces. So if we have air currents that are moving this hot, moist air in an upward direction, and we have a wet basement or crawl space, where does that moisture go? It goes to the attic. It goes to the top of the house where it settles, collects on the underside of the roof, creates dampness and the conditions that are conducive to mold growth, right? So if you have a wet basement or crawl space, you really wanna correct that issue. And so we prevent these, these, this moisture from, from emanating from the lower portion of the house, going up through the house, and then collecting on the underside of the roof deck where mold can grow. Another thing that can uh, create mold is obviously roof leaks and problems like that, although this is less common. So usually what we'll see is mold on the underside of a roof deck, and that is typically gonna be an inside problem. But on occasion, we have a roof leak or some other water penetration, say around the chimney, that is making the rafters or roof deck moist, and that is causing 
uh, this problem in the attic, right? So we're cr creating conditions again that uh, mold can grow. So uh, mold needs moisture. And if we have a roof leak, obviously, you know, we want, we want to fix that. We can also, to stop this moisture or to help uh, at least make it better, is to properly insulate our attics. So if we have an, uh, an attic that's not properly insulated, our moisture is just going to go from lower to higher unabated. But if we have a nice layer, 14, 16 inches of insulation in the attic space that's well done and the attic is well sealed, well, moisture is going to have a hard time. It's going to at least be slowed down. And if we slow down the moisture penetration in the attic, we'll slow down and help mitigate these mold problems that we see a lot uh, doing home inspections. Another thing that we look for is uh, penetrations. So anywhere where there's an opening into the attic space, and there's a couple of big culprits that really can allow for hot, moist air from downstairs to travel up to the attic. And one of them is pot lights or can lights, right? So those old pot or can lights, they're, not, they're just open up in the attic space. And that creates a tremendous pathway for moisture just to emanate, just to travel up from the lower to higher and enter into the attic space. Another thing that is uh, important, but often nobody pays any attention to it, is our attic access hatch. So a lot of times in houses, we'll have these set of pull down steps, right? Simple enough, but they're never really insulated. And a lot of times they don't fit correctly and there's a big gap. So then we're driving that moisture again from lower to higher and it's entering into our attic. So what we really need to do is make sure that our points of entry for the moisture in the home are rectified and corrected. And if we do that, we'll really help control attic, attic moisture and thus help prevent mold growth from the attic. You'd be surprised how many home inspections I go to and I do find you know, these mold-like substances in the attic space. Now in New Jersey, we can't really call them mold we have to call them mold-like substances until they're tested. But most of the time when we test it, it does come back positive for mold. And if, you, and if you're buying a house with mold in the attic, it should be rectified. I mean, nobody wants mold in their house. Now, granted, you don't spend a lot of time in the attic, but it's something that you just don't want in the house and can be a health hazard if you're immunocompromised or an older individual. So. It, it's something that really should be, be corrected. So as a home inspector here in New Jersey, it's something that we're looking hard for. I'm certified in mold, and we really want to understand what the mold conditions are in the house, where that moisture is going. So on this video coming up, I have a, a short video about some recent mold I found in an attic space. We did test it, so it was confirmed as mold. And if you guys are looking for a house and you see something similar to this, understand that you're probably looking at mold. And that mold is probably a cladosporium type mold, which is in the black mold family. And this particular mold is quite prevalent in attics and on basement walls. But this is the mold we generally come across. And it is mycotoxic and it can be harmful if you breathe in a lot of these mold spores. So let's take a look. And I just want you to under also understand that not all hope is lost. Like if you have a mold problem in your attic or you're purchasing a house with a mold problem, it can be rectified. It's not something that uh, is, is, you know, you have to definitely run away. It's something that there's reputable mold companies, uh, abatement companies out there that can solve these problems. But you just don't want to band-aid the issue, right? You want to make sure that you do the right thing to solve the moisture problems and then you can solve your mold problem. Because if you solve your mold problem and there's still high moisture, you're just really band-aiding the issue. So that's all I have about attic mold. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's take a look at some attic mold. I just jumped up to the attic space here and we see all this black material on the underside of the roof deck, which is probably a cladosporium mold caused by the lack of bathroom exhaust vents. So all of the bathroom moisture is just coming right up here to the attic space. It's settling and mold spores are attaching itself to the moisture and then growing. 
So definitely a mold remediation is going to have to take place in this attic space. And definitely our bathrooms are going to be have to be vented out to the exterior of the home, either the sidewall or the roof. A lot of older homes don't have bathroom exhaust vents, but they're highly recommended because moisture is just going to enter the attic space and cause damage, mold and problems. So this is something that's going to have to be remediated, definitely repaired.